your tuck. See my kicks when I see y'all walk. Flex on me, y'all ain't strong. Say my name, that's them look. Still on top, yeah, it's been that long. They won't know till I say I'm gone. They won't know, they won't know. Say my name. Hey everyone, and welcome to the That Sam Law Show. Today we have an amazing guest. She is a really good friend of mine, and she's like a mentor to me. Her name is Dr. Corinne Graham. So, Dr. G, I know I met you like a while ago at, um, I think it was like an event on marketing, which happens to be something that I do and I've been doing for the last seven years. And we kind of like gravitated towards each other. You were like, I go to Old Westbury. I was, I was like, wait, so did I. I went to Old Westbury too. And I was like, that's amazing. And you were like, all right, so we're, we're like sisters we're from the same school. <laughs> and you've looked out for me ever since, which I truly, truly appreciate. So my audience doesn't know you yet, and they have to know you. I felt like they have to know you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? I, that's a lot of stuff you're asking there. Look, um, you know, most importantly is when you recognize greatness or good things or that you need to be there for others, you have to pay it forward. You have to be there. And I recognize your passion, what you were doing, and the importance of it. So it just, you know, that we built that camaraderie and um, that sort of stuff. So I'm excited to be here, you know, giving me the cool factor <laughs> in terms of, you know, being on your show and, you know, getting to know your audience. And where am I from? I'm from New York, but I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, most people don't usually guess, but I was born in Jamaica. Right. Oh, wow. See, I would have never guessed that, and I remember when you told me that, and I was like, I love Jamaica. I've been there a bunch of times. I love the food. I have a hummingbird tattooed on my thigh. I was like, I'm obsessed. I was like, oh, yeah, I love this woman right away. Now, since you did grow up a little different than me, I'm a native Long Islander. I come from African-American parents. What was it like growing up with Jamaican parents? What are some of the values that they have instilled in you? So, uh, you know, there are always going to be cultural differences, and I don't want to take away from luck. The U.S. culture is like linked to the Caribbean culture, and the Jamaican culture is infused in your, the American, African-American history. So um, just looking at those general things, I think fundamentally is, you know, a sense of family value, um, really understanding and appreciating and what you have and not to just be greedy in that sense but also striving for the best education is fundamentally important and for me my family is very very close so we have that sort of relationship and i'm going to say it's because i also had a young mom my mom's a teenage mom my dad's young as well but he's a bit older than my mom my mom's a teenage mom yeah I was a teen mom. That's not easy being a teen mom. But you have a beautiful family. I had the pleasure of meeting them for your birthday this June, which was amazing. We had such a good time. There was good food. There yeah. was music. We took a bunch of photos. It was a blast. Now, uh, I have a personal relationship with you. But, you know, when you know somebody personally, you don't know, like, every single thing about them. And when they're about to come on a show, you need to know as many things about them as possible because you want the audience to know everything they can know. So during our research, pre-production, pre we realized, like, you're a woman who wears a lot of hats. Like, I knew that. But I didn't realize how many hats, and I'm not going to list them all. I'm just going to list a few. So you've been a model. You're a businesswoman, and you're a humanitarian. How do you juggle it all? Like... How do you do that? I think it goes back to your earlier question. Part of having a large family, my mom is one of 14. My dad's one of, I think, seven or eight and so on. So family became very important, is infused, doing the right thing. If you had most people from the Caribbean here from, you know, whatever culture, if you have a pound of sugar or someone else needed it, you give it to them and mom will figure it out you know nobody need to know that you were hungry or so mm. on and i think it's it, it those values that were nurtured and for me honestly my early childhood is infused with religion mm. so you know raised catholic 
uh, Catholic and I've gone to many different denominations and, um, you know, because part of family, friends. And I think over the years, you start to learn, right, what people really want versus it's about you. And I think that it's easy to then just give them the things that they need. And that makes them s succeed and you feel good and it helps you and it actually pays forward. Anyways, you get the rewards. Mm. That's, <laughs> that's true. Now, I know we're all wondering because when I introduced you, I said Dr. Corinne Graham, right? Are you really a doctor on all the things you do? <laughs> I, I am a pile higher deeper. It took, me, took a while, <laughs> right? But pile higher deeper in more BS and in more debt, right? Mm. But, you know, we're part of the 2% and part of the work that we do is help uh, create economic empowerment. And, and that means sustaining economies, creating things, whether it's research and so on. Uh, so it's not for everyone. It's kind of like being an entrepreneur. You know, it's great to be able to do it. Everybody has entrepreneurial skill, but it's not for the faint of heart. So, you know, I, I was thinking about it for some, somehow it's just like, you know, like, you know, once you go in, it's like, you know, some people talk, I'm not a tattoo person, you know, nothing against it. But mm -hmm. like, once you get the first one, you have to go like, once you it's dip addictive. in and yeah. you start, you know what success is, you want what's the next opportunity mm. and it comes and you kind of have to be like a little bit of a visionary. So um, that's something that I've always wanted to be. I wanted to be a doctor when I was about eight. Wow. I wanted to be a general surgeon. So this came as an extension of it. I didn't directly go to that path, mm -hmm. but as my career was developing, it just was just there. You know, we went to SUNY O Westbury, not together, but I have two undergrads from them, one in management and I went back for my accounting degree. Wow. So, yeah, I, she has her PhD. So she's a, <laughs> she has her doctorate degree. She's not a medical doctor. Um, you said something like really powerful. You talked about paying it forward and you just talked about all of the things you did. And with all that you do, I mean, you guys see her on camera. She's gorgeous, right? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> how do you do all that and make being beautiful so effortless? Like, how? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, dear father. Uh, <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, you have to take care of self, and self is always important. So fundamentally for me, um, I do have bad habits like others here or there, but not over the top. You know, so I eat healthier. I'm, I haven't gone to the gym in over 10 years, folks, because my lifestyle doesn't allow it, but I'm active, okay. right? So I'm moving from one place to the next. I'm going to walk up the stairs, whatever. I'm an active person, so I'm not sitting. You know, I might go walking once or twice a year, but I'm very active. And so, you know, making sure you're doing that. Water, making sure you're drinking lots mm. of water. I, I prefer lighter foods, so talk about Jamaican food. Sure, I enjoy it to a certain extent. But it's not my, those are not my favorite foods mm. because my body says, oh, too much, too much, you know. So I think it's just balance and um, know what works for you. You know, my body tells me no, and I'm not going to push it past, like, just, all right, oh, you only get a taste, and that's it. That makes sense. <laughs> now, I know that in order to be a model and, of course, be so beautiful, <laughs> you have, like, like this really amazing Skin. Like what <laughs> what goes into that regimen? Skin's like important. You know, I try to take care of my skin. What goes into your regimen? So, you know, I'm glad you asked because that's one of the reasons over the years I was always like, why is it that I can't be so creative like others? I was creative, mm -hmm. but like I can't invent that thing that everybody wants or so on. Right. But as an entrepreneur or just, you know, going out, being a mentor, um, talking to women in business or young people, Indiv individuals, you know, school, whatever age it was, people were always asking the question like, you go 24 seven, how's it possible that you don't have all these and whatever? And I'm like, because similar to what I said, you know, a healthier kind of lifestyle. I'm a water drinker. I love water. Mm -hmm. It's just natural. The junk food and stuff, it's occasional. I don't have them. 
So I was, you know, people were asking about certain things and I was like, well, you know, I use a lot of natural things, right? Mm. So then started with like the organic cottons, like the t-shirts, some of them I have logo today, I have this one on, Ooh. a lot of people like it. It <laughs> says I love the sciences, but the sciences doesn't love me back. Uh, so a lot of people understand what that means, mm -hmm. you know, you're really into that space, but you're not really cut out to be that right. person. Right, it's not your space. Yeah, it's a little bit, but not 100%, right. you can't own it like that. And so then, you know, even with the soaps, um, I decided to go into and, and make them. They're not mine. I don't hand make them. Uh, but I went in and changed the IP for another company. So I'm going to start. I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> That's going to actually dig into our next question. So Dr. G is talking about soap. And that's kind of going to lead us into her latest business endeavor, which is Designs by Dr. G. Now, it's a fash it is a sustainable brand. It's vegan, gluten, and paraben free. What made you pursue this? You were talking about the soap. So like obviously you live this healthy lifestyle. Like what made you say, "Hey, I'm going to share this with others?" Because I had the brain fart like, "Oh, ding ding, you have these whimsy <laughs> idea. People are always asking you about these things." Why not give them what it is that they want? Mm -hmm. And then I have to amp that version up. I'm not someone that uses makeup all the time, but now that I'm carrying my own product line, I have to be my brand. And so therefore, what do I want in my skin? I want things that are not going to make me break out or itch or agitate or give me all the sorts of different things. And that's the way to go, right? So right. you have to curate it as part of a commercialization process to see what works. And, um, you know, hence the brand just, it grew. First, it was just the lipsticks and the soaps and the t-shirt. And folks are like, we want more stuff. So even like we have things for men, the shaving cream and, and the, the, the moisturizer. Mm -hmm. um, we have people are asking, do you have anything for neck or for the eyes? And mm. like... All right, you know, so you have to work on all of these things. People ask about the hair. I'm like, it, it's, you know, there are tons of hair care products out there, and it's not for everyone. So that's kind of where that was, you know, there, there is people who have lots of allergies like mm -hmm. myself and sensitivities. Right. So you have to, you know, there's a market for it. It's not an easy market, you know, as a model and someone who's been in marketing that it's not easy to build brand and to get it nope. to the next level. Nope. And people have to buy in it and love it. And I'm fortunate that I have really true, you know, as I'm building that base, like they love it, like they want nothing else but that. Right. Like, you know, I need this. So the I'm orders come in and, and like even the lipsticks, like they stay on forever. Forever, <laughs> I have it on today. Let me tell you, I had a crazy weekend. And um, this is actually one of your lip glosses. It's like a lip gloss and a yeah, color and yeah, like one stick. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Do you have it? Um, I had it. I should have bought yeah, it. Something with me. like that. So yes. it's something like this. Yes. Um, and it's like two. It's this color and a lighter color. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to tell you, I I got it over the weekend and I wore it and it did not come off. Like I ate stuff. <laughs> I had some drinks. I did a bunch of stuff and it mm -hmm. did not come off. Actually, my eyes are also designed by Dr. G too. So I'm, I don't want to talk about things I wouldn't use. I don't want to talk about things I wouldn't wear. So I've been rocking her brand since 2019 since yeah, I met you and you told yeah. me about it and you said that your lipstick doesn't come off. I said, okay, I need <laughs> lipstick that doesn't come off. And now I'm buying more mm -hmm. things. I have the soaps. Mm -hmm. I love the soaps. Oh yeah, my yeah. I have to make the blueberry pomegranates. Yes, uh, please. We did. We 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 ran out of those, and I didn't do it just because of COVID. I focused more on the lavender and the thyme. Right. You know. That's so, a good one um, you know, uh, it, for the you know the properties and what was going on and and so on. So, I I kind of have to get those <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they were great. They're great. I am I'm obsessed with her soaps. I cannot even tell you. I love them. I get sad when I run out. I got to get some more. Um, I actually just recently ran out, so I have to get some more. But I love your soap. It's amazing. It smells amazing. And, like, if you wear another fragrance, it doesn't overpower it. Like, mm -hmm. some soaps just, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, men's ax. Like, you know if mm -hmm. your man wears ax and he just hopped out the shower, like, you kind of know. It stays there forever. My dad wore ax, and I was like... Okay, my dad just took a shower, so he's, or I would smell it. And I'd be like, oh, he's going to be in there a while. All right. But like with her soaps, it's not overpowering, but it's a nice light scent mm -hmm. and it's really great for your skin. I've had no issues. Mm -hmm. 
So I love your brand, you know. <laughs> and I love your brand too. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> But one of the things I want to know is like when you had this aha moment to start a sustainable lifestyle brand, did you just go for it or did it take time to develop? No, um, and partially because I have also an operation background. So starting the first company already knew a lot of these things and I'm trained to uh, commercialize. Graham Consulting, right? Yeah, my consulting firm, uh, which is a state MWB minority and women business hey, enterprise. Hey, drop those credentials, <laughs> drop them. One more time, one more time for the audience. It's a what? <laughs> state and county and city MWBE minority woman business enterprise, and I'm both. And you know, I get an opportunity, as you talk about with my work, to touch so many communities and so therefore you have to give back and by doing that you also support others right mm. yourself other people who are looking to grow to grow their business or to go right. into something change career and and that's why it's important you have to be that person and not because everybody wants to shine everybody wants to be happy but there's so much fake <laughs> whatever people are putting True. out there while underneath there they need that help so i think it helps you you know for me it helps me to tap into that authentic person and really help them if they want to like mm. you can change or help anybody change if they don't buy in and they don't want to you so can't wasted lead a energy horse to water but can't you can't man. force them to drink yeah. i'll be like i want to know where the water is how many of y'all want to know where the water is lead me please and you have been yeah so i don't want to give a false sense of like it is a lot of work if you're right. going to start out anything you're going to do in, uh, in terms of entrepreneurship uh, for me when i was in my last corporate job which was many moons ago I had already started because I started getting stuck in corporate world. Mm -hmm. I was bored. Um, I was getting all the learning I could. And, you know, I didn't really want to be an entrepreneur, but I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be, you know, eventually it's a side thing, right? right? Not so much so going into that full speed ahead. And when I did, you know, I took a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. I lost my, uh, we lost our home. Um, you know, uh, you know, it could have been avoided in certain situations we think about and people can say whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that's my savings as a young person going into work, starting out and putting into your 401k. That's what helped me to both buy my house and, you know, also to launch my business mm -hmm. and to fund it. And then the business fail within that. It's the same business. You just had to pivot and go and continue. And as it comes, you keep building and just, you know, building new businesses, different types of businesses, and you just grow your uh, your company that way. <laughs> That's true. I feel like a lot of people don't realize that having these highs and these lows or these things that you feel like are derailing you are actually steps towards success. And mm -hmm. like you said, su success is addictive. That moment when you're like, yes, I did it. I, I, I got this contract. I sealed this deal, I got mm -hmm. these credentials, mm -hmm. I got these sponsors. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're posting on social media, you're sharing these things with your family and friends. But then you could go a couple months, a year or so, and it's dark, like it gets really dark or things get hard and you might not have the funds to, hey, keep your house or keep your apartment. Like we've all gone, we've all gone through these things and if you haven't, you might, mm -hmm. you know? and being able to come back from that and build again it's like you're like a phoenix <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is you have to have support team around you and you have right. to have a backup plan and i think part of it is like look that's not the end of the road you have all everything you need to go to keep going you know it wasn't as if we were some people become homeless we weren't homeless it right. was it's just it's a loss it happens when you have a business regardless of the size you lose you lose sales you have to build back up you lose two million dollars 20 or 10 million you're gonna have to go out there to go and get it i mean right. this past couple of months i've shared personally that i have had a couple of you know major setbacks and part of that also is one of my gigs that I had that was, you know, pretty steady over the years just went on sabbatical for like four months. So this is where, again, you have to have your reserve, your cash reserves built up and you can put in and you can go in and not stressing out. And if so, guess what? Go get a hustle. <laughs> Gig, hustle and grind. Listen, these are some powerful, <laughs> this is some powerful advice. Hey everyone, it's Sam Law of the That Sam Law Show. And I just wanna welcome a very special person, our sponsor, John Bell of the Bell Law Group. 
John Bell, tell us about the Bell Law Group. So uh, we're a law firm in Syosa, Long Island, and we focus on employment law and personal injury law. Uh, the reason we focus on that is basically to fight for people in need. That's the reason why I became a lawyer, and that has been the mission of the Bell Law Group since I started it 20 years ago. started out as a law office of Jonathan Bell, but then when, be when it became more than just me, we decided to change the name, change the uh, logo and branding for the Bell Law Group, and we've been out there ever since. Great. So, John Bell, if anyone needs your services, how can they reach you? 855-JOHN-BELL, uh, J-O-N-B-E-L-L, -L, or on our website, belllg.com. So powerful. Thank you. This is some powerful <laughs> advice, y'all. Get a gig, hustle and grind. Have your DoorDash, your Uber, mm -hmm. or wherever it is. I know we have some people from other countries that watch. Whatever it is that's like that, where you're from, you know, Don't as long as it's like legal, I think the living, song hustle. <laughs> Come up with something new if you can. What you think might not be something, it could be something. So mm -hmm. definitely go for it. Now, a lot of our viewers are starting businesses or they have a small business. What are some steps that you would tell them or you feel like they might take or that you've taken to get that ball rolling? The most important thing you can do before you start your business is a marketing plan. Um, Fail safe, none. That's it. Uh, your business plan comes from your marketing plan. You put in the financials and so on. Your marketing plan will push you to know how you can pivot and because you're going to know the number of revenue streams that are possible. You know, understanding what is the purpose or, you know, your business and who those customers are. Right. You can't just, you know, yes, it's great and you want to go in. you got to test it. And I think that is one of the first thing you will you'll have to do and the other part for me is having a management accounting background budgeting mm. <laughs> don't try to spend sure you you do and you have to take those risks sometimes you have to spend what you don't have to get to the next level but you still have to have you know steps or process in place to kind of help you get over the hurdle for me my fail safe was a contract like two days before it w was renewed got pulled so you're planning that contract then a, a partner um, whatever s things that they did another like a three hundred thousand dollar potential contract went through the window now you that's the sort of stuff that happens when you're starting a business or you're in a certain phase that can push you to you know you, you don't fail you just have to kind of regroup and just rebound and just continue so I think those are two things and look there are plenty of organizations out there that Things are free. Your local chambers of commerce, the SBA, Small Business Association, SBDC, Small Business Development Corp. If you're in the city, Brooklyn Library, Public Library, SBS, because I'm one of the mentors for small business services out there. Uh, so there are tons of things. Just ask. You know, there are money out there. People are trying to help. And just, you know, those are the things I would su suggest. Okay, those <laughs> are some great steps. So... While she's talking about this step and she's mm. talking about funding, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, the Bell Law Group. They are an employment as well as personal injury law firm. So listen, if you're going through one of those things and you need help, please, 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 please reach out to the Bell Law Group. And listen, get that funding. We appreciate you and we thank you for being our sponsor. Now. <laughs> talked about some great advice. That was some great advice. Get get your marketing plan, your business plan will come while you're writing that and get your funding. That's important. So now that you've got all these things together and your <laughs> online store is open, what can we look forward to purchasing? I see you bought some goodies with you today. I'm wearing some of your Yeah, goodies. I thought one, um, some of the colors, especially the blushes, I'm not sure if you've shared them. I'm a Copacabana, so if you look, I'm always like gloss or glowing people. You know, like I like the, the other bronzers and so on, but I think that gives like a fresh, like a youthful and just like, you know, just easy look. Right. And, and so I use my blush all over. So oh, really? they're on the cheeks and then you'll have them, you know, like 
a little bit to kind of make like the skin in your, pop. In the spots where you, if you blush or when you blush, yeah, and highlight. Like, it light, nice. right. And then just even using your spritzers or toners to like to freshen up and that sort of stuff. Give so, you that dewy look. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, I can't do makeup like you. I always have I to get my, class, I have to get my, like if I'm, I get it professionally done. I'll mm -hmm. do the mascara, the lipstick, and the pencils here or there, just certain parts, and I did do my brows. Mm. <laughs> now you look, you look amazing. You always look amazing. So. You're too kind, thank no, you. No, it's true. So you wear your brand as well, and I think that's important. Like, mm -hmm. if you have a brand, or you're representing a brand, like, wear it, share it, you know, mm -hmm. tell people about it. I'm, I'm excited to wear this brand. You've given me some great tips, like putting the, um, the gloss with uh, pairing it with a liner. Mm -hmm. to like just add like a pop yep. of color. I did that this morning and I was like, ooh, yep. I look mm -hmm. fancy. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, different, <laughs> yeah. No, it's really good. And you have your like age-defying eye cream. For those who are into it or need it. <laughs> yeah, listen, some of us got to start. Like, I'm not going to reveal my age if you know, you know. But, you know. I'm only 28. You've got to be like 25, 21, right? Exactly. Mm. So it's good to like, so I was told, well, during an, um, during a taping of a show, I think it was Dr. Oz, I was told, like, just start early with your eye cream. It's like yep. preparing. Yeah, moisturizer. And, yeah, like it keeps your eyes moist. And so you won't actually develop, like, the um, fine lines and wrinkles as fast as you might have mm -hmm. genetically. Like, it'll actually slow the process. So I actually started doing that. You have some foundation. Ooh. Yeah. Look at this. It's in... Colors we recognize. It's real people <laughs> colors. <laughs> and stuff for guys, too. Ooh, what do you got for guys? These here, shaving cream hey. and, and after stuff. Yeah. Listen. Yeah, yeah. They're, it's a they're actually shaving? Yeah, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's actually, I have a couple of strong supporters, male supporters for that bite and gift it to their friends so they can try it. That's nice. Yeah, See, yeah, that's, we yeah. got a little something for everybody. I always have people say, what do you have for the men? <laughs> well, we have this. Listen, cooling aftershave. Listen, yeah. we got stuff for men on here. We didn't forget about y'all. We love y'all. Yeah. We love and, the men. Yeah. They're like one of our top viewers. Um, <laughs> so one of the things you told me, which I thought was amazing and kind of like cool, it's like fun fact, is that a lot of drag queens actually like to use this under their foundation, is that correct? So I have a couple of colleagues who, um, actually the first person that had shared it with me, and you know, I had others ask, is ran out of their base foundation, and because it, it's, it stays, mm. like they put it on. Like think about when you're painting, right? right. You put a base coat over, right. so you get what it is which you want to finish, and they're like, yeah, it works. And See? it's matte, because matte stays on, so you have to use like oil, Ooh. you know, like right. oil based thing to take it off. But even when you do, it still has right. that. And, and the thing is, it's not, it's vegan, they're, you know, they're either vegan, gluten free, so it's not, it's like a little healthier. Wouldn't you rather put something more healthier in your yes. skin than, yeah? Yes, because I don't like, I don't like all the bumps. Like, <laughs> I don't want to get bumps or, you know, Sometimes I don't know if I'm going to a shoot or something like that. So, listen, I have my last and final question. Aye. It's the fun one. You've done I some live streams with me before. So I like you know, karaoke, I ask yes. The fun <laughs> That's true. She does love karaoke also. If y'all are in the area and you know Dr. G, hit her up for some karaoke. But this question has absolutely nothing to do with uh -oh. karaoke. <laughs> Yikes. So... Those questions. It's, it's weird, but it's fun. If mm. you were picked to go on the first mission to Mars by NASA, and they said you could bring three things from Earth, what would you bring and why? Oh, so it's funny. Uh, I am involved in space. <laughs> hey, Space see? research. I'm with Space Renaissance, and we That's do a awesome. lot of different stuff. Yeah, and I have people who are uh, astronauts who are part of our group. So that is a tough question, because I'm claustrophobic, and I'm afraid of height. So here goes, my Bible, hey. because I do read it and it's something that inspires me. I do it morning, noon, and night, whenever mm. it is I need to get that, you know, like, okay, be good, be nice, be kind, stop being mean, <laughs> stop being so silly. Um, the other thing I think, I think would be something in terms of my family. And then the other thing would be, I like music. 
you know. So I, I'm like, you know, mood music, maybe you know, jazz like Star Lord or from stuff. Guardians of the Galaxy. You're gonna bring some music with you. Yeah, that but, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe some. You know, I'll have to put some. Well, yeah, I think those those would be able to inspire me. So your Bible, a memento from your family, and some tunes. Yeah, I That's think it. so. Listen, if you guys ever get an opportunity to go into Nassau, <laughs> Nassau, that's the beach. I'm sorry. Or it's a county on Long Island. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> Nassau. <laughs> you get to go in space. Think about what three things you would be. So Dr. G, I just want to thank you for being here with us today on the That Sam mm -hmm. Law Show. Um, so where can my audience buy your products and where can they find you? So um, thank you for inviting me. You know, I always feel cool coming on to the Sam Law Show. And thanks for always thinking about me and, you know, sharing. It's appreciated and, you know, uh, it's good deeds you paid forward. Thank you. Uh, designs by Dr. G and it's design spelt out D-E-S-I, what is it, D-E-S-I-G-N-S, by B Y D R G. It's I G and it's on Facebook. And you'll find me I'm on tons of other places you'll see okay. by those there. We're looking out we are looking out for new products from you. We're looking forward to everything you have to bring to our world and our community. We appreciate you and have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you for tuning in everyone. <laughs>